ahead and get started. This session will focus on Google integrations. Um, as the world works, right, we often do save, all right, perfect. Um, we do use the cloud space just to be safe, right? Um, if you forget your computer, the computer crashes, anything happened, we love keeping things in the cloud. So Google Drive is often one of our best friends um, when creating content just to have a safe copy. It will be there as long as we have our email accounts, right? Um, so because of that, Canvas does have different ways we can integrate with Google. Um, and those are some of the things we'll be focusing on in this session. Um, first of all, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Julia Martins. Um, I will be your trainer slash consultant for today. I do use Google integrations quite a bit. Um, I do have some workarounds for things that aren't necessarily um, integrated just yet. So we'll go through all of those. Um, I have been training with Canvas for a couple of years. I have used Canvas as a teacher, as a student, as an admin. So I hope I can um, address all of your questions. One cool slash different thing about me is that I'm currently located in Brazil. So in my profile image, I'm actually in um, Lake Superior in Wisconsin. So it's completely different. It's freezing cold. And now I live in a tropical island in Brazil. Um, so that's one cool thing about me. I'm in a completely different time zone for me. It's about 1, almost 2 p.m. Um, and I know you guys are just starting your day. All right. If you do have any questions, I'll ask you to use the chat. Um, when using the chat, you may message the hosts, which would come to me and Brittany, um, or you may uh, message everyone. I highly suggest using everyone just so we're all on the same page. If I address a question, maybe someone else has the same question you do, things like that. Um, so I ask you to try to use the everyone. If you don't, I know it often happens. We um, send something there and we forgot to change it, anything like that, that's fine. Um, you are welcome to send your questions at any time. Um, we do have a Q&A in the end. If you want to unmute your mic and ask questions out loud, I will ask you, kindly ask you to wait to do that towards the end. Um, but if you want a question through the chat, I will gladly answer it during the demo. All right. Um, other than that, I think we are ready to get started. When looking at Google integrations, there are two main things we're looking at. One, static content. So when I talk about static content is if you want to share um, a presentation or a Google Doc um, or even forms, which are not necessarily static, um, we can do all of that through the use of modules or the rich content editor. How does that come around? So through the modules, if you want to share a presentation, share a form, which are fairly common, um, or share a document, we can always attach those either as files or as leaving documents. In the modules, you always have the option to attach a file, which would then upload a file to your module. But if you have it in your Google Drive, it will be the current version of that document. The whole magic about integrating with Google is that even if you make any changes, updates, um, anything like that, your document will automatically be updated in Canvas as well. With file uploads, then you're uploading that single version. If you make updates, you need to re-upload that, maybe delete the old version and things like that. So having it simply linked to the cloud um, will avoid misinformation or outdated information, all right? The second way we have to add static content is through the rich content editor. And I'm not saying pages because the rich content editor is available everywhere, right? So if you are building an announcement or adding discussion, um, introductions, discussion prompts, if you have assignment details or even quiz details, you are able to get to your um, drive and select either um, Google Sheets, Google Docs, or Google Presentations, all right? So these three will be available and you are able to add it either to your module 
or to the rich content editor. And we'll go through step by step how we can do those. Next, we would be looking at Google Assignments. Um, some of us are used to the Google, um, Google for Education and Google Assignments. By integrating your Google and Canvas, we can essentially set up a Google Cloud assignment. So your students would be submitting something through Google. They would get their own version of a document, work from that document, submit that in Google Cloud. When you come into your Canvas course as a teacher, you would be able to see where your students are at, um, if they have made changes, if they have started that assignment, if they have submitted. And when, we, when it comes to the grading process, instead of using our Canvas built-in speed grader, you'll also be using your Google Cloud assignment for grading. So grading feedback, you'll be using Google rubrics instead of Canvas rubrics. All of those things um, will be happening in Google. But what's the integration then? Um, as soon as you grade that student, the grade that you entered while in Google Assignments will automatically um, come to your Canvas gradebook. So although we are using Google, we are getting to Google from our Canvas course and our grade pass back essentially is happening um, automatically and simultaneously, all right? Submission and grading. So we don't necessarily need to use Google Assignments for our students to have access to their um, Google Drive in order in when submitting their assignments. So when we are doing a assignment file upload submission type, for example, your students will still have access to their Google Drive from there. With that, it becomes a bit easier when using perhaps um, a school lab computer, or if they borrowed it from someone else, maybe they were collaborating and working in a group or in pairs with another student. Um, so all of those things become a bit easier and they're not relying on a specific physical um, computer or phone or mobile device to submit that assignment. So we do have um, a little bit more flexibility when building content and when working with assignments. So first thing I want to do is actually go to a Canvas course and look at how we can add the content from our Google Drive into a module. So let me open my course right here. Um, and here I am in a Canvas course, which in this case is called Canvas plus Google. Um, I did add a module before the session for our demonstration today. And I told you, in this case, we can use Rich Content Editor or simply the modules. So let's start with adding that content to a module. So not attached to a page, not attached to a discussion, not attached to an assignment. When adding any items to the modules, we will essentially have that module right here. In my case, mine is blank. Um, I'll go to this plus icon. The plus icon is the famous add button in Canvas. As soon as I click on that button, I'll get options to add items. When adding items, I'll get my drop down menu and I'll have a few options right here. In this case, what I want to use is the external tool. Let me go right ahead and I'll actually share my entire desktop with you just so that's easier. Here we go. So I'm picking external tool, all right? Choosing external tool, I will get a list of my integrations. So I will most likely have a bit more than you would, but we will essentially be looking for the same thing. This order should be in alphabetical order. So I'll ask you to go all the way to G and look for Google Drive LTI 1.3. All right, so we started with adding an item. When we're adding an item, we're looking for the external tool in the dropdown. And once those integrations pop up, I want to look for Google Drive LTI 1.3. Um, in the description, I'll see that it's to collect, analyze, and grade student work with Google Assignments. That's the one I want to look for. I'll click on that title. 
And this will pop up. Right here, it will tell me that I am posting course materials and it will tell me that I'm able to select a file from my Google Drive. One thing that I will ask you to do when in this page is making sure you are in your correct email account. Um, with that, I mean your work account. Um, if you use your um, personal Gmail, if you have one in the same um, profile or computer or browser, that may be um, switched around. If that's the case, you can click and switch account and then you can log in with your work one, all right? If when you check right here, it is the correct email. In my case, it's my GDU um, email for instructor. Right here, I can confirm the same email. I'm all set, that's all I need to know. So go ahead and click on select file. When I click on select file, you will see this pop up. Um, if you are following along and you have two screens or you're looking at my Zoom screen in one place and you have your own computer in the other one, um, sometimes we may miss and you may tell me, oh, I'm not finding it. That has happened a couple of times. Um, so if you need to minimize my screen and then bring it back, just make sure you find um, something like this. Essentially, we are looking at my Google Drive. From here, I can navigate from recent to my drive. So if you have a really well-organized drive with course folders or student folders or assignment folders, things like that, you are able to navigate it just like you would your web OneDrive. Or if you are just uploading a document and you want that in your drive and make that connection, you can upload something right here. Again, you are uploading it to your drive. You're not necessarily uploading it to Canvas yet, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'll come right here and I will use our um, agenda document. So right here, and I'll click and add. Unfortunately, you can select multiple at the same time. If you need to add multiple, um, multiple archives and um, files to that module, we need to do this process um, each time for one document, all right? So I'll go ahead and select this um, Google Doc we'll be able to attach Google Docs, Google Sheets, or presentations this way, all right? So those are the three type of um, documents that are supported through this integration. I'll go ahead and do add. As soon as I click add, it will ask me if I am attaching this file. So as we all know, when sharing materials through Google Drive, it will give you a lot of different options through the sharing settings. So editor or viewer or commenting, right? In this case, when attaching work, when attaching files to your Canvas course, it will always be giving the students viewing rights only, all right? So the students will not be able to make any changes. They will simply be able to see that document um, and download it if they would like, all right? I'll go ahead and hit attach. Here we go, and I'm back to my Canvas screen. Not a whole lot has changed, I know, but the subtle change we'll see is that the URL right here is now field, and my page name will essentially come out as the title of that document, all right? If you need to change this um, page name, this title, you can. By changing the page name, you're not by any means impacting the title of the document because right now we're talking canvas and not google anymore all right so just say agenda for google session and i'll go ahead and do add item perfect so now i have my module for the integration demo i'll have my agenda for the google session you'll see that the icon right here will be a link Essentially, we are just linking out to that document. So every time you're using external tools with the modules, this is what it will look like. But when I open it, I will be looking at that document. All right, so it will be the exact same structure as I have in my web browser, but it will be inside my course. 
Perfect. So I have a question that would it be possible to use the add as URL directly for the same process? Yes. So let me go back. What is technically easier with using the integration in this case is that you don't need your Google Drive opened on the side, all right? But this is one of my demos. If I go ahead and I open my drive in a second screen, second tab, um, I went to demo actually adding forms because I told you that through the integration, we can do Google Sheets, Google Docs, Google Presentations, but not forms, all right? With that, I can come in here, I'll hit send, and I'll get a link to my um, form. So the same way I'm getting a link to the form, you can get a link to a um, Google Doc, Google Presentation, any of those. I'll go ahead and copy that link. And this time, because I am starting with the link, I'll click on the plus icon and I'll use the external URL as suggested. When I use external URL, I'll be able to paste that link right in and I'll just say Google form. Sometimes, which is why we don't start right away with this, is that pages or documents, they're not um, able to display inside Canvas. One example is our Canvas community guides. If you use our Canvas community guides as the URL, it will not be opening and displayed and interactive when using the URL. Um, that is just because of how it was built. So some websites you may face that um, issue. It's not the case with Google. So I'll go ahead and hit add item. And now when I go to the Google form, it will also display right in. So the way it is being displayed will be a bit different from my, my agenda. But essentially, I am able to integrate both of them, either using the external tool or using the link. Yes, so with Google Slides, here we go. I can go through either processes. So I'll actually do the external tool again because it would be oops, external tool, because it would be enabled. Scroll all the way down, do my drive, select file, and now select our presentation. Go ahead and do attach. I'll say Google presentation. Add item. I think the presentation is one of the coolest one, if I can say that, um, just because it will allow your students to navigate through the slides. My screen is like a odd size right now. There you go. Um, so you are able to just navigate through the icons, go through all of the assignments. I'm not going to give you any spoilers, um, but the students are also able to look at speakers notes do full screen, select autoplay, um, and then more for exporting and downloading it as a PDF, um, as a Word, as a Microsoft PowerPoint, um, printing it, things like that. So you do have um, some options when using um, Google Slides as well. Perfect, of course, not a problem. So this is how we will be able to use this through the modules. Again, when we edit to the module, you will only display the document. That's all we were going to see. Um, we'll click next and then get to that document. With that in mind, we do have the option to use the reach content editor. So what I'm going to do next is I'll create a page. So it'll be a blank page, create a page, say page demo, Google content. Click add item. I'll go ahead, open that page. Go to edit. And here, oh, let me zoom in this time. And here, I'll have the rich content editor. In the rich content editor, we'll have amazing tools 
um, such as copying, pasting, viewing options, inserting links, images, media, documents, formatting options, bolding, italicizing, strike through. There's a whole lot we can do, but this will allow us to perhaps add some instructions before providing that document. So this presentation is for April 23rd. Um, please download for notes. All right. So I can add any type of text, any information I want to. And if I am happy where I am, I can go ahead and use tools, go to apps. You may not have the shortcut just yet. Um, the shortcuts you see right here in my screen will be built on based on your usage. So whatever you are using most often or more often will be popping up. If it's your first time using the apps, I'll suggest going to view all. And in here, we'll have a very similar view um, or options to our external tools. Again, I'll ask us to go to the Google Drive LTI 1.3. So let's step back, making sure our cursor is in the right place. Tools, coming to tools, I want to go to apps and view all apps. All right. Once I'm in my apps, I want to get to Google Drive LTI 1.3. If you look at the description, you'll be seeing something very similar. Collect, analyze, and grade student work with Google Assignments. Go ahead and select that option. Same process. It will indicate to me that I am posting course materials. Um, I am emphasizing this um, term because when we go to assignments, then it will be a bit different, all right? So in here, we're simply posting materials. Same process, making sure we're using the correct email accounts and hit select file. In this case, I'll use the presentation just because I think it looks better than just a long file. I'll go ahead and click add. Same message on sharing um, options. Is this how I want to do it? Am I I'm allowing my students to see this document. Do I agree with that? Yes. And then the document will load right in. All right. I'll just say, um, good luck. I hope you enjoy the session. More enter. I'll scroll all the way down and I'll save my page. Perfect. So because I am using a page, I have a page title. I can enter any text I want ahead of time. Then I can share that document right here, be able to navigate through my slides. And if I keep scrolling out in my page, I'll see my good luck message. All of the documents we mentioned earlier, you are able to embed anywhere you're using the rich content editor, but the demonstration of the forms, all right? If you need to share a form in here, I would just suggest doing a hyperlink, um, a linking functionality with the, with the rich content editor. Um, another way we can use or do this is with announcements. Because the rich content editor is simply available everywhere, we can share a document a form. Maybe we want the students to have um, to sign this document or to see it before class. Maybe we just want to push it out um, a little extra through the use of announcements. In here, we'll have the same tools we have with the Reach Content Editor, including our LTI 1.3 app. All right, because it is the Reach Content Editor, we can do it anywhere the Reach Content Editor is present. So sometimes we may use it for assignment instructions, discussion instructions. Um, we want to put it out as um, something to be downloaded through an announcement, or again, we'll be able to edit in our modules. All right, 
do we have any questions on static content? So from here, your students are not necessarily interacting or writing on it. They were simply seeing, getting access to these documents. Okay, I'll do a pause, check in the chat, see if we have anything coming out there. If you're good to go, tell me you're good to go too. Okay, perfect. Um, Norma, I all of the things we are going through will be in our doc. So right here, I have a link to how to add something to your modules. So that is um, an, going through the same steps we're going through right now, all right? Using that external tool. And same thing with the use of the reach content editor, all right? So we have those options there. Perfect, I see we're all together in here. Perfect, thank you all so much. Yes, so the question we got was, can I update the Google Doc without re-uploading it? Yes, that will be the case with any of those. So let's take a look at everything I put in here I'm actually using. I'll just do a presentation. Or maybe I should do the doc. I think the doc will probably be easier. One more. Here we go. So this is our resource doc. If I go back, so here's my leaving copy in Google. And I can type hello there. When I go back to Canvas, I'll refresh. my hello there will be there, all right? Um, that's the cool thing about it. Because it's currently leaving in Google, any changes you make in your Google Doc, in your Google Drive, will be simply um, updated and automatically translating to what the students will be seeing in Canvas. Let's say there was a typo such as the hello there, maybe shouldn't be there. Um, I could simply go back. I'll just delete this from here. Back to my course. I'll refresh. And we're back to that original doc. Yeah, it's really, it's just easier in general. Um, everything will be currently updated. Okay, um, clarification. So placing the Google form link will only. So the Google form, Google forms will work a bit differently because it will never be, a, be available to you when putting in here. If we are using the external tool, it won't work. But if we do the external link and that will only, it's only needed for Google Forms is through the external tool, external URL. So if we're using Google Forms, Google Forms only, we want to use external URL, but your students are able to um, enter their names in here. Uh, boop, boop, boop. I'll select some options. I'll go ahead and hit submit. Perfect. So now if I go back ooh, to my doc, I'll see that I have one response. And my response is right here. So that was what I just typed. All right. So the Google form, because it is a form, um, and by adding it with the external URL is the only thing that the students can actually um, interact with. I don't know if interact would be the correct word, um, but they can essentially submit something with it, even if it's simply um, through a link or through a module, things like that. All right. I hope that makes more sense. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, no problem. Perfect. If we're happy with um, the static, somewhat static content um, and how the updates will work, changes, things like that, um, we'll actually move on to our assignments. With assignments, there are a couple different things. All right. So I have some examples to show you first, and then we'll go through how we can build those in. The first one 
is actually using my Google Drive, my Google um, Doc as my um, description. So in here, in the instructions, I simply added that document saying, please read chapter two and answer the following questions. And right here, they will be able to see the questions and I'm asking them to submit um, a document with the answers through Canvas. So it's very similar to what we just did. I used the reach content editor and simply um, entered my instructions. It's a way to do it. Um, I don't know if it's the best way to do it. If you are giving assignment descriptions for something that should be submitted in Canvas through Canvas using Canvas tools, I would often suggest using the reach content editor. Why is that? Because with the reach content editor, our students can use the immersive reader if needed. All right. That's the only thing that I would um, have towards Canvas in this specific case. But it is possible, maybe if all of your um, assignments are already created that you have all of the assignment details, all of the disc discussion prompts. Um, maybe it's easier to just jump right into it, um, but it is a possibility. All right. Everything else is just normal text entry URL, things like that. The next option that I have will be a file upload to show you how this connects to our Google integration, I'll use the student view. For us in our side, our teacher side, not a whole lot will change, but I have a file upload assignment for my student. In the details here, once again, I just used my um, Google Drive to provide instructions, all right? Ooh, let me do, try again, here we go. Yeah, so this is all on the page I gave you, yes. So in here, when I'm using my assignment, I can, I have this upload option, studio option or more. This would be me as a student, all right? So this, it's just when the students want to submit that assignment. They will have the option to upload something. So maybe they can bring in a file, use their Canvas files, um, maybe you want them to take a picture of something, they can use their webcam for photos. You can get to, ooh, I don't know if you get to studio, um, but in the more options, you, your students will have access to the LTI 1.3. So if your students are keeping their homework, their assignments, their um, activities in their Google Doc, they are able to use that as well, all right? Again, this will only change, and I just wanted to tell you that your students do have the ability to access their Google Drive as well. So we can highly encourage them to do keep their homework there. It's saved in the cloud. There's definitely no way the dog can eat it. There's no my computer crash. Um, they would be able to access it and um, grab it from anywhere in Canvas. All right. Now I'll leave my student view. Here we go. And the next assignment I want to show you is what the actual um, integration will look like. Here it is. This is what a Google assignment integration looks like. Um, in this case, we are actually using Google to provide the students with a document to start with. So each student gets their own copy. We will be able to add due dates, total points, um, rubrics, check for plagiarism, all of those things from your Google assignment, all right? So none of this would be essentially leaving in Canvas, we're just integrating. When, let me use the slides to guide us through it. When we create that assignment, there's no submissions yet. This is essentially what we're looking at. We'll have the title of that assignment, total points, due dates, the file we have attached, rubric, and no submissions yet. So let's go ahead, go through all of the steps to get to this screen. I'm back to my course. This time I'll actually create that assignment from my module, um, just because then we will have everything in one screen. So I'll have my 
demonstration module. Go to the plus icon, get to assignments, create a new assignment. And I can say Google 1.3 assignment. Go ahead and add item. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating an assignment from scratch. So there's no details, no nothing. Yes, perfect. So Anna is saying that she loves using it. It allows her to see student in progress. Um, so if you have many students, you don't know if they have submitted their work, you can see and check if they got started or if they haven't even touched it yet. Um, but you can also see it when they have completed, you can then provide the feedback and so on. Correct. So right here, I have a blank assignment. There's nothing there yet. I'll click on it. You'll see there's no details, no points, nothing to submit, submit it. I'll go ahead and do edit. I don't necessarily suggest adding a whole lot of details in this space now because the brilliancy of the Google assignments is that you use the document, which can be your document with details, and that is what you will provide to students. Each student will get their own copy of the same document. Um, for example, if you have a worksheet and you want them to fill out their worksheet, you can give them essentially a template to start with and they can go from there, all right? So I'll leave this space blank, but you can add instructions if you would like. I can do regular things for assignments. So setting the total points, um, assigning it to an, assi um, an assignment group, how you want your points to be displayed. And here in submission type, it's where things will change a little bit. Just like we did in modules, we will be using an external tool because the Google Canvas will be an integration. So I'll go ahead and select external tool. From here, I will have this enter or find the external tool URL. I'll hit find. In here, very similar to the modules, in alphabetical order, I'll find my Google Assignments LTI 1.3. All right, so let's strike back. I am creating an assignment. I'll scroll down a little bit. Start with my settings, total points, assignment group, points display as, and in submission type, I'll select external tool. All right, when doing this, I'll hit find, and then I'll get to my Google Assignments LTI 1.3. Perfect. Click in there, and then we'll go through the same processes, making sure we have the correct emails. Hit continue. And now I'll have a bit of a different page, because from here, I'll essentially create that assignment. First thing is that you can do check for plagiarism. Um, I think there's a limit on how many you can do and how many you can use. Um, so I'll leave mine unchecked for now. Files. You can do make a copy of attached files to each of your students to edit and submit. So again, we need to create an assignment. So if you have it already created, you can attach. If you are creating it right now, you can create it right here on the spot. All right, again, we're looking at docs, sheets, and presentations. I already have um, a doc with some descriptions, so I'll go ahead and start from there. And here, I'll pick my assignment instructions document. Again, you are able to use assignments, um, documents, presentations, or sheets. I'll go ahead and do add. Again, it will remind me that each student will get their own copy. And now I'll do the settings. For the settings, we want to make sure it is matching what I have set up in Canvas. So first of all, my assignment was worth 10 points and not 100. If for any reason you missed this, um, you can fix it later, but if you don't, essentially, um, Canvas will just do the math and 
replicate that percentage. So in here, if they scored 50%, they will make it 50% of the grade they have in Canvas, all right? Um, so in case there are mistakes, this is how they would be solved. Next, we have the due date. Um, I don't suggest doing the due date. Um, as Anna said, you'll be able to see when students started working on it. The students will be able to submit right from there. There is a resubmit, reassign. Um, there are some extra actions. Sometimes when using the due date, the due date you have in Google assignment will be a hard lock. So similar to our Canvas until, right? So in Canvas, we have available from, due date, and then until. This due date is essentially a hard day. So it's when they would stop being able to submit assignments and things like that. So it is okay to leave it with no due date and just use the due date in Canvas, all right? Now, rubrics. If you are using rubrics for grading, you want to add them right here. The rubrics you use in Canvas, in this case, will not be any good because the grading process will be in Google. So even if you have your rubric in Canvas, you will not be able to see it or use it um, because we're not using the speed grader. All right, so my issue with the LTI 1.3 is that some Canvas courses that I share or have taken over from another teacher, the student can't access the doc. I have switched to the old Canvas doc assignment. Is there a fix to this? Um, they can't access the doc they have already submitted or they can't access the doc that the old teacher shared. that was shared by the other teacher, like the, the teacher that was there before you. Oh, that is odd. I don't know, I would actually check with your admin on it because it may be something with your um, integration. Because if you are the teacher in that course, then they shouldn't have any issues sharing it. Yeah, I've never seen that, I'm sorry. All right, so from here, if you are ready, so the file is already attached or created, the total points is matching the LMS. Um, if you add a due date, make sure it's matching the LMS as well. And if you have a rubric, um, you want to make sure you add it in here, all right? So that's all set, I'll go ahead and hit create. We will be getting back to this um, pop-up. It, again, will look like not a whole lot has changed, but if I scroll down, the URL is now filled in. So I'll go ahead and hit select. And then my submission type should be ready to go. Now, because you are using the submission type of external tool, some things will be taken away. So if this is the case, you will not be able to use Assign, uh, group assignments. So if you have student groups and they want, you want them to submit work, that would not be the case. And you will not be able to use peer reviews either. So those two are things that we will be doing strictly inside Canvas. So if you do want to use the integration, um, we don't have a workaround for that yet, all right? From here on, it's just regular settings. How many submission attempts you will allow, um, anonymous grading, things like that. The assigned to, again, we want to make sure it is assigned to everyone. The due date, again, I highly suggest doing the due date from here and not um, from that doc. I'll go ahead and do save and publish. Perfect. So here I'll getting, I'm getting back to that screen we had in the slide. I'll have my title, total points. Again, if you need to change it or adjust it, you can. If you need to add the due date at any point, you can. The file we have attached, in this case, I don't have a rubric, um, but no students have submitted or returned, all right? So 
What does this mean? Submitted is your student has already worked on it, they were happy, and they hit the button submit, submitting it for feedback. The returned is you have already graded them and you send them back. So you provided feedback already. So that would be the returned. All right. Perfect. When your students are looking at that assignment, this is basically what they see. They will have the title of that assignment, total points, due date, and they will see that they have a file. Essentially, their name will be added um, at that title. So student copy of this, of the title of that um, document, and they can click an open assignment. As soon as they click an open assignment, they will get their own copy. Um, Google will be creating a folder to host their, this course assignment in their Google Drive. Everything will be right there. They are able to access it from Canvas at any time. And for you, once your student has already um, started, looked at it, they will be looking at something like this. So let me go to my other screen where I have a student that has submitted. Do -do. Perfect. So you can have three different um, status. So you can have assigned, submitted, or graded. So assigned will just tell you assigned. What does that mean? That Google already assigned a copy of that document to Harry. So Harry has opened that assignment. He has his own copy. He can or may not be working on it just yet, but he opened this, he generated that copy for himself, but perhaps I haven't graded him yet that he hasn't submitted yet. Um, Neville has already submitted and I have already graded him. So we have one returned for um, Neville, all right? So these are some of the status you may have. If your student has already submitted and it's ready for grading, you'll see that submitted in green and in the number of submitted, you have um, the number referencing the amount of students that has submitted in your course, all right? Ooh, perfect. If your student has already submitted, you can click on their names. From here, you'll be able to see that document. So right here, um, you are able to navigate from one student to the other, similar to how you would in the reach in the speed grader. So you have the arrows going from previous to next. In your side column and the right, again, similar to the speed grader you will have the file submitted. So maybe you wanna download it, you wanna keep track of it, you can. In the grade, you can simply enter that grade right here. So in this case, I just changed it. Um, if you have a rubric, you can use your rubric from here. So you can um, see how they are being graded, not met, met needs improvement. And if you are providing overall feedback, so similar to Canvas um, comments, you can do that as well. Okay, how do I teach students to submit a document? Um, it will be very intuitive. So once they come to this screen with an open assignment, um, it will right away create, generate that document and coming back to Canvas, they will have that submit. Um, I can, we have a couple minutes, I can do a demo of that as well if needed. There we go. Let me do assignments. We just created this one. So right here, the modules are not published. Modules, publish, there we go. So right here, I am a student um, and this is the assignment we just created together. So let me open it again. 
Do -do. Here we go. So this will be what the students will look like. Um, oops, this one is in Portuguese. So they can open um, to generate that document. They can click on that document or on that button. From here, they are able to just fill it out. So answer here. Do a tab in, more here, and so on. They can oops, go back, I'll refresh. It will tell them that has been assigned. Assigned. And I can say open to submit. They need to open it at least once to work on that assignment, make changes and things like that. From here, then I can hit send or submit. And that is submitted. So they would just say, like you're good to go, submit it. Your activity has been sent and will be soon graded by your instructor. I don't know why this tab is in different language because my canvas should be in English. But yeah, so it's very intuitive for students too. Um, now that I have Luna already submitting that activity, when I come back, um, I do have a sign for Harry, a sign for Neville, um, and submitted for Luna. So I can open that, grade it, and then return their grade. Perfect. Um, from here, again, you can use feedback if you're using, um, you can annotate in the document as well, leave um, comments and suggestions, things that would happen in any Google um, assignment, in the Google document, right? So you'll still be able to do that. So feedback, um, grading, pushing the grades, all of that will happen from this page. And then Canvas will take care of translating that into your gradebook. No, so you won't get the same notices you, you, you do with regular Canvas assignments. Um, you will essentially need to come in here um, and check it out. Yes, because essentially it's through Google. So that's the one thing um, that will be a bit different. All right, so same thing after submission, we'll get the submitted notice. For the students, they will just um, be able to submit. Doo -doo -doo. Mm, I don't know. I think I haven't seen that, like an, like an email notice. Um, I don't think we can do that from here. Yeah. Okay. Um, if we do have any other questions, I saw Norma's question um, and that would be, yeah, exactly. Five. Okay, so the number of the session is five. We do have a couple more minutes. Um, just one consideration. So I did use our student view to test and show you some things. But for Google assignments, our test student doesn't have a Google assignment, the Google account. Um, so that's the one thing we will not be able to do using our test student. Um, but other than that, everything else should give you a pretty nice view. You'll see the layout, how it's looking, um, things like that. Again, I'll open for questions. I know Brittany is giving us um, some links. So the link to attendance is right there. Link to the survey is right there. Yeah, and I think the, sorry to interrupt. Um, I think the next session starts in three minutes. So um, there's like a break from now until 1035. So just if everyone makes sure to complete those so that you can get credit. And then I'll let Julia just finish really quickly, so. Perfect, thank you. Um, I posted my survey as well. Um, Norma asked me a question. How do you generate a student account? 
Student accounts will be generated automatically. Um, the same way it's integrated for us, it will be integrated for them. So as if they do have a school email within Google, um, that would automatically come in when we're syncing um, with your SIS. So you don't need to worry about that. Um, your admin probably already did that for you. I meant for me to check what I put in. So in here, to check what the assignment, the file is. Oh, you will not be able to do that. So what I did is I have a student that I can work in from the student account. Um, what you'll be able to do is click on their names and you'll be able to see what that specific student has, but you won't do it like I did like a fake student, no. Yeah, but you are able to see the document you attached, like the original document. Um, you are able to check what that would be. All right, um, I would like to thank you all for joining me. I hope it was helpful. Um, I'm glad you all came and were very active, asked a lot of questions. Um, well, good luck from now to use your Google and Canvas integration. It's definitely helpful. Um, hopefully we'll get more updates soon where we'll be able to use our student view, we'll be able to be notified and things like that. All yes, right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Julie, we appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. And then just housekeeping, don't leave the room unless you have both of those links or else you won't get credit. But yes, thank you again, Julia. It's very informative, good information.